Hello and welcome. I'm Camila Lemia, and this is Rappler Talk. Today, we will be talking to Senate Minority Leader Franklin Delon, a member of the opposition bloc and a stalwart of the Liberal Party. We will be discussing with him his stance on the drug-related killings as well as the ongoing Senate probe into the $6.4 billion worth of smuggled shabu from China. Hi, sir. Thank Good you for morning. joining us. Good morning, Camila. Good morning. Sir, first, let's discuss the opposition, the future of the opposition under President Duterte. How would you assess where is it now, where it is now? Being in the opposition today is very difficult, especially uh, given the age of the trolls. And uh, admittedly, whether or not funded by government or funded by somebody else or on their own, the uh, trolls uh, really uh, mold public opinion, uh, whatever we say. And uh, the <laughs> uh, uh, we must admit that they have uh, that the administration has the superiority insofar as this aspect uh, is concerned. And therefore, it makes our role in the opposition more difficult. But uh, the opposition is needed. Uh, a responsible opposition is needed uh, in order that our democracy will continue uh, to be our way of life. Uh, you know, we cannot have the silence of the cemetery in a democratic mm -hmm. system uh, where everybody would concur. And therefore, we will continue to uh, scrutinize the uh, actions of the administration, not for the sake of scrutinizing, but uh, in order to expose uh, what we believe uh, are, are, are shortcomings, and we support whatever there are uh, issues to be supported. Uh, example, uh, I support the train, but we uh, and, and but we will make sure that uh, the uh, the system would really address the gaps in our taxation system. Uh, we will support uh, certain measures that uh, would be favored, uh, would be favorable uh, to, uh, or would would be in pursuit of good governance, uh, as uh, for example uh, the uh, the uh, 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 creation of a department of housing. We need that, and uh, but we will be critical, for example, of uh, what we see in, in today about the extrajudicial killings. Uh, yeah. We believe that uh, we measure the success of the drug war, which we support, but we measure the success of the drug war not on the basis of the number of dead bodies, but on the number of, of, of people mm -hmm. saved from these scourges. How is the Liberal Party grappling with the reality of a popular president amid all the issues thrown well, at him? Uh, we we, we uh, do uh, recognize that. Uh, but uh, uh, as I said, we but we will continue to be critical of issues which we believe is detrimental to our mm -hmm. system of government, uh, detrimental to our democratic system. But we'll support those which we believe can be for the good of our mm -hmm. people. What about Vice President Lenny Robredo? What will be her role in this opposition, or what is her role? Her, she is now the chair of our uh, party. She's the chair, chairperson of our Liberal Party, and she will continue. We will uh, to lead our party. We look to her uh, as a, as a uh, leader, and will continuously seek her position and views on various issues that come on a daily basis. But when it comes to the opposition to the government, what is her role? Because right now he's not. She doesn't have that much aggressive take on the issues, except for the extrajudicial killings. Well, uh, it's a, it's a matter of uh, perception on her style of uh, of, of, of uh, putting across her her position on various issues. Uh, maybe uh, uh, well, she is not a Trillianist who would mm -hmm. be uh, so so stern mm -hmm. and so uh, how do you call this so strong. Uh, but certainly, uh, it doesn't mean that she is less effective. Uh, maybe she is not that 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 kind of a media copy which you guys would look for, but I tell you, she is leading. As a fiscalizer, what do you think is the greatest achievement of the Duterte administration more than a year into office? I would say that the way they have handled the economy, uh, uh, the previous administration uh, set 
many of the uh, foundations mm -hmm. and uh, they have uh, not departed from this. They have pursued it. Uh, uh, and uh, that's the reason why we see our economy to be uh, continuously mm -hmm. resilient. They have not departed uh, drastically mm -hmm. from uh, the past uh, administration's uh, thrust. Uh, so I would consider that as, a, as an achievement. The, uh, while uh, the, 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 the unemployment rate, uh, uh, while has that improved substantially, it has... Uh, uh, not deteriorated. Uh, of course, uh, we should make greater strides uh, on the issue of uh, unemployment uh, because uh, people need jobs. Aside from the economy, mm -hmm. do you see any other areas where they excelled? Uh, well, you only talk about the economy, which is a major issue. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the peace and order, the matter of the uh, uh, peace and order is uh, muddled by all these uh, uh, issues on extrajudicial killing. So, difficult to say. Mm. The drug killings continue with impunity, but there doesn't seem much public outrage on the issue. How mm. do you make sense of this? Well, <laughs> you know, from being a lawyer by profession, uh, I would say that uh, this is a manifestation in part in part a manifestation of the frustration of our people in our justice system. Uh, that is why uh, you don't, you know, uh, you uh, maybe uh, people say, <laughs> you know, if the justice system is so, is so kaput, yeah. maybe this is the only way. But people are beginning to realize that that is not correct. Uh, uh, that lack of outrage because of our uh, shortcomings in our justice system uh, cannot be justified. One life uh, uh, taken is one life too many. Uh, in the case of Kian de los Santos, terrible. Uh, she has, it has become a symbol of uh, these uh, extrajudicial killings. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, the uh, parents of Kian de los Santos will not compromise the 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 antarnis, the legacy of his of the of of, of, the, of that that their son has created uh, uh, in terms of the, she, he becoming a symbol of uh, the unjust uh, uh, methods conducted you know kabir i don't know how many kids have been uh, whose lives and whose dreams were snapped because of these uh, killings now that you mentioned it, how do you think will the meeting between Kian's parents and President Duterte affect the ongoing Senate probe into the teenagers' death? I don't think it will affect it. As, uh, and technically, uh, the parents are, 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 I do not even know if they were a witness mm -hmm. to the incident. What is, uh, this is not uh, what we call a, 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 a crime which would need private complainants. This is a crime, uh, this is a public crime, meaning it is, that is why the title is People of the Philippines, because the, the plaintiff or the complainant is the people represented by the prosecution, and therefore, theoretically, an affidavit of desistance on the part of the parents will not affect the prosecution if there are, uh, as, as there are, this, this were witnesses, and there's evidence to, to prove that, in fact, there was murder. So regardless kung nagkausap sila ni Presidente, nagkaayos, it doesn't affect the case? It doesn't affect the case. It doesn't affect the criminal prosecution. Some say, the, some say that the death of Kian sparked something. Do you agree with that observation? Yes, yes. it sparked something. As I said earlier, uh, it has bec uh, the death of Kian became... The symbol of uh, how unjust this so-called drug war has gone uh, over the past several months. Let's talk about Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre II, mm -hmm. who seems to be the subject of your comments lately. Mm -hmm. What can you say about his statement insisting that it's the DOJ and not the Ombudsman that has jurisdiction? He insisted that. Totally wrong and unfounded. 
the Ombudsman power to investigate all public officials is found in the Constitution. The jurisdiction of the Ombudsman is not in question. Uh, they have jurisdiction. The situation, however, is there is concurrent jurisdiction between the National Prosecution Service mm -hmm. and the Department of Justice and the Ombudsman. That is why they had the memorandum of agreement which recognized this concurrent, meaning both of them have jurisdiction, uh, except that to, uh, to, to avoid confusion, the agency which takes cognizance first does it to the uh, exclusion of the other. But this is just a memorandum of agreement because the law con confers and the Constitution confers upon the Ombudsman jurisdiction over all acts of public officials which are contrary to law. The citation of grade 27, as you will recall when uh, Secretary Agri keeps on saying, uh, these are below grade 27, these are ordinary policemen, they should, the Ombudsman has no jurisdiction, wrong. The grade 27 refers to the jurisdiction of the Sandigan Bayan and the regular courts. In other words, if the accused falls below the grade 27, mm -hmm. uh, then the trial uh, and the jurisdiction is with the regional trial court. If it is 27 and above, it is with the Sandigan Bayan. But it doesn't mean that the Ombudsman cannot investigate, cannot conduct mm -hmm. preliminary investigation. It will, if, if, in, if the Ombudsman will say that there is a probable cause, since it is, uh, it, since it is a, 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 a public official below grade 27, then it goes to the regional trial oh. court. Uh, but I repeat, the grade 27 refers to the jurisdiction between the regular courts or the regional trial court and the Sandigan Bayan. In fact, just you need not be a lawyer. If the ombudsman can investigate impeachable officials, just investigate, huh? right? She can con she can conduct investigation of impeachable officials. Mm -hmm. How much more of a patrolman? Why can she not conduct a preliminary investigation? Uh, uh, but in the case of the impeachable officials, she can conduct, but she cannot file a case during the incumbency of these officials. So this fact in itself is a recognition that the Ombudsman's jurisdiction is all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the DOJ is conducting it is also because they have jurisdiction. And in accordance with the MOA signed, the, 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 uh, um, the Department of Justice has taken first recognition. That is why I was saying, Mr. Secretary, concede, please concede, or allow the Ombudsman to um, conduct the preliminary investigation because by law and by constitution, they have jurisdiction. What, the, what do you make of these statements by Secretary Aguirre? The, Is it a deliberate attempt to misread the law or to I, I don't know. I, I do not want to uh, go into that. Uh, but the totality, the reason why I, I requested him to defer to the Ombudsman is because to a reasonable mind, the totality of his state of the statements of Secretary Aguirre would really indicate that they are leaning uh, in I favor see. of protecting the, uh, the uh, policemen. And this is the theoretical. We saw the case of Superintendent Marcos. You know, the, in other words, uh, on the basis of the past action, there is basis for concern that uh, justice is not uh, balanced in the investigation of the uh, DOJ. What is it now with President Duterte's criticisms uh, about Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales? He even said that Morales should not or is not entitled to a full term of seven years. What well, do you make of those statements? Uh, first, uh, the, the, to me, the, I, I, as a legal, legal proposition, uh, the uh, uh, Ombudsman uh, Chit Carpio Morales is entitled to seven years because there is nothing in the Constitution 
which says that she only serves the unexpired term of the predecessor, unlike the cases of the Comelec, of the COA, it's very specific, uh, the Constitution says so. Number two, if indeed uh, they, they, serious, they seriously doubt the continued uh, term of uh, continuous discharge of the functions of, of uh, uh, Carpio Morales, the, the, the Solicitor General can always file what we call a quo warranto, meaning they can, the, the government can question the continued uh, discharge of the function by uh, Chit Carpio Morales. This is a question of law. Sir, why do you think the President or the DOJ is questioning the jurisdiction and the legality of the Ombudsman's term? Ah, that's, uh, you ask them that, uh, not for me to answer that. But no cause of concern, those things? Uh, well, as I said, it's a question of law. Uh, I don't think that uh, uh, they can physically remove uh, uh, Carpio Morales. They go to court and question it. Let the Supreme Court finally decide on this. We are living in an environment of the rule of law. With the recent assignment of Chief Inspector Espenido to Iloilo, do you fear for the life of your second cousin? I, I, I already made a statement there. It's a cause of concern and I'll stop there. But you, 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 you have, have you talked to your cousin about it? No. Well, I, I, I told him that uh, when I received the news, I told him that there, was, there, there, there is this assignment and that's all. Mm. Not, nothing about any protection or any help? No, no. Mm. Sir, what have you gleaned so far from the ongoing Senate probe into the drug smuggling? Wow. <laughs> uh, scary. Uh, because if uh, uh, 604 kilograms were found in one shipment, and uh, this Chen and... Uh, and uh, Taguba uh, had, what, uh, 20 previous transactions. Uh, I am concerned that uh, there might have been other incidents in the past. And so, you know, the uh, drug campaign uh, is really adversely affected by this. But given this, Camille, you know, we're conducting this investigation in aid of legislation. My take is maybe we should start seriously considering going back to the system of a pre-inspection from the port of embarkation. Not for purposes of valuation, but for purposes of the port of the, the Philippine ports being informed of what are the contents of each shipment coming out of China. The, the pre-inspection goes there, uh, is there. And then it is, uh, it is immediately relayed to the Philippine Bureau of Customs. And, uh, uh, and so at, at, at uh, that point, we already know uh, what the contents of the shipments mm -hmm. are. And uh, you have to rely on the, uh, on the capacity and on the prestige of these international uh, uh, inspection companies so that they can tell us uh, and we rely on their integrity, uh, on the contents of a particular uh, shipment. Uh, recall before, there was this SGS, but for some reason or another, it was discontinued. It was a pre-inspection service done by a Swiss company who's, uh, who's known worldwide to be engaged in this kind of business. That's my take uh, on all of this. Sir, so just to clarify, yes. this pre-inspection occurs, let's say, in, in China. China. That's correct. And then the company informs the ports in, that in the Philippines that this uh, box number one or this mm -hmm. forty-foot container contain the following. Mm -hmm. Okay, and from there, uh, uh, we will uh, we have advanced information as to what that particular shipment contains. And of course, that uh, they they will see if there's contraband there, and uh, we rely on their uh, being in this business with an international uh, record of uh, competence that uh, w that uh, we will work on for purposes of correcting all of this uh, smuggling. Well, of course, these are not uh, the ultimate solution, you know. Uh, it's but we are desperately looking 
for at the very least uh, immediate measures that we can adopt in order to stop this uh, uh, Tara system and this worst. We can tolerate probably a Tara system, but yeah. to have uh, 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 Shabu uh, worth I mean, right? 6.4 billion pesos being uh, brought through uh, the peers, wow, that's mm -hmm. extremely scary. The hearings, we, we, we so far have six hearings already. What mm. are your main questions so far? Well, um, uh, the, the, at bottom, why, how, was, the, how was the shipment uh, uh, spirited out of the customs area? Uh, that's, my, that's my main concern and, all, and uh, questions can flow from that. The competence, the, uh, the competence of those banning the system, uh, the uh, 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 validity or correctness of, a, of consolidating uh, all the powers in the office of the commissioner. So we do hope that we can come up with a good report. Are you still positive that this issue will be addressed? Because this issue is not just the first time. I mean, the 6.4 billion shabu, it's the first time ever. It's the biggest contraband uh, of illegal drugs. But before, there, there have been many issues sounding the Bureau of Customs. How positive are you that this can be addressed? Uh, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a question in everybody's mind and everybody uh, is trying to crack. Those well-meaning uh, people are trying to crack their heads uh, how to solve, how to provide a solution to this. Um, this, uh, this has been going on. Uh, uh, some uh, customs officials, either because uh, because they are incompetent or they're corrupt, get into this. These are uh, uh, even well-meaning uh, customs mm -hmm. uh, officials, uh, bureau, uh, commissioners, could not do anything because of the pervasive culture uh, in the uh, Bureau of Customs uh, on, on, on this matter. In the past hearing, the names of Paolo Duterte and mm -hmm. lawyer Attorney Manessa Scarpio were brought up mm. in the Senate hearing. Do you think it's time for them to be invited? You know, I um, unfortunately have not attended many of those hearings, and I do not have uh, I do not have uh, uh, detailed knowledge of their participation. Mm -hmm. I, I you know the uh, Dick, the Senator Dick Gordon should. Uh, um, uh, be conscious. Uh, I, I'm sure he is conscious of uh, the uh, credibility of the hearings uh, uh, being affected by not digging deep enough. But at the same time, he is conscious that we might just uh, be the, uh, tarnishing people's uh, reputation. So I am sure he is being considered. Uh, but as I you know, I do, do not attend every hearing. Uh, he's in a better position. Uh, Senator Gordon would be in a better position to make that assessment. How do you think is the president handling the accusations against his family members compared to how he is handling the allegations against his critics? Because against, against uh, well, you know, one thing that puzzled me was uh, uh, his... Uh, uh, it was the time that it took for the president to act on file Don's uh, resignation. Uh, given the seriousness of the charges, uh, it took time for uh, file Don to go. Um, so, uh, uh, now, insofar as the other personalities are concerned, um, uh, you, you know, as I said, I have not been able to follow it, to follow the proceedings that closely and as I said, uh, Senator Gordon may be in a better position to answer that question. Sir, the president recently mentioned or recently revealed that the Marcos family is planning to return some of their wealth to the government. What mm -hmm. can you say about this? Well, that, doesn't, was, that doesn't exempt them from criminal prosecution. Uh, all it does is, uh, is uh, remove the civil liability to the extent that uh, these, uh, these amounts are returned. Uh, so that's one. So it doesn't erase any criminal liability and any criminal prosecution must continue uh, uh, even if they return uh, this uh, uh, ill-gotten wealth. Number two, 
uh, I do not know the whether or not this constitute all or substantially all of the uh, of the uh, 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 stolen wealth, and therefore there must be uh, credible proof that and evidence that this constitutes uh, uh, all or substantially all of the assets. But I would repeat, uh, that's uh, the the uh, liability under our criminal laws will remain even if there is this uh, compromise and uh, the, uh, in any case, the criminal liability cannot be compromised. What can you say that it was the president himself who revealed it to the public I, well, through an emissary? Uh, doesn't uh, doesn't bother me, uh, you know. Doesn't bother me. Why doesn't it bother you, sir? Well, uh, he wa the, this is a uh, the the, the uh, president is uh, the political head of our government and. Uh, this is part of governance, so he's entitled to it. But the return of the Marcos family to power, does it alarm you or the Liberal Party? Well, uh, we have had always, uh, we have always taken the position that uh, in, in the Marcos uh, issues that, uh, number one, we opposed the return to the Libigan and Bayani, you know. Uh, we we uh, pushed uh, for the compensation of the human rights victims. Um, so we we uh, believe the, that uh, again this is a shortcoming of our justice system. So now let's go to the Senate. You've mm. both been a part of the majority early on, and now yeah, you're the yeah. minority leader. How would you assess the leadership of Senate President Coco Pimentel? Well, uh, you know, I was there. I, I have I've been there, and I have done that. It's not an easy job to do. You have to take care of. Uh, the open, close quote, the egos of 23 senators. Uh, this is a collegial body, it's not easy. And uh, I can sympathize with uh, Senator Coco. Uh, uh, there are times when uh, uh, people are, w would, would grumble, but not only in the, majority, in the minority, but even certain majority. But this grumbling, as I said, is uh, uh, part of the course. And uh, 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 by and large, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, he, has, uh, he has been able to manage uh, the affairs of the Senate. As a lawyer and as a former DOJ chief, mm -hmm. how, what, how do you view the re-election of Senator Coco Pimentel? Because he himself said that he's expecting it to be questioned before the High Court. The it's conference. a legal issue. It is an interesting legal issue. Uh, yes, it will have to be settled by the Supreme Court. But there what is your reading arguments. of the law? There are arguments uh, on, 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 on both sides of the scale. So let it be that and let it get to the Supreme Court. Senator Coco told us earlier that he might vacate his post mid-2018 to focus on his re-election. Is it a normal thing for Senate presidents to do? Well, that's a personal decision on his part. Mm -hmm. I, when I was, uh, when I, I ran as, uh, for re-election as Senate president and uh, is it a uh, it, difficult task to do both, um, you know, you have no, your own I, I, did, I, I, I was able to pass major pieces of legislation while I was running for election. But it's, it's to his own uh -huh. uh, as, uh, assessment. Many have left the Liberal Party to join the administration party. What is the future of the LP in the 2019 elections? Ano pong plans? Well, we will present, uh, we will field candidates. For senatorial? For senator and up to the local level. Um, and we'll present a slate to the people for them to, to judge us and, 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 and uh, in effect, renew the mandate of the, of the political party, of the Liberal Party. Will it be a co <laughs> an opposition coalition or purely LP? Too early to say, mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's too early to say, um, you know, one day is too long in politics. But right now, sir, do you have names in mind of who might run not under Not yet. LP? We're not yet talking about it. What Except for Bam Aquino, who is a re-electionist. Sir, let's now go to another contentious issue in the Duterte administration, the way they're handling China. What can you say about it? Because right now, there have been international reports saying that there have been new structures in the contested islands. But the Philippine government and the Department of Foreign Affairs are so far quiet on the facts about the issue. We should keep on asserting our, 
uh, our sovereignty uh, over our claim on these islands because uh, uh, our silence uh, and the very aggressive posture of China can cause, can prejudice our claim on these islands. Uh, we have, uh, but, but of course I can understand the balancing that they're doing, uh, I mean, that the administration is doing, but uh, uh, I think uh, it's a fair warning to say that uh, let us uh, assert continuously our claim over this Sprat, the islands, and uh, our claim over the, the portions of South China Sea, because uh, uh, acquiescence can ripen the claim uh, and validate the claim of China. What should be the concrete steps of the Department of Foreign well, Affairs? Well, in every available opportunity, we should assert our, 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 our claim of sovereignty over these islands. Sir, I'm just curious. After this term ends, will they be liable, let's say, for whatever they did with the China issue? Uh, May ganun na ba tayong president? <laughs> difficult to say. Wala bang ganong jurisprudence uh, or precedent? I am, I'm not aware of any, of any jurisprudence. I may be wrong, but uh, I cannot, as, uh, as I sit here, Kabil, I, I could not uh, answer your question as to what could happen after they leave office. Let's now talk about Senator Laila de Lima, your ally and one of the fiercest critics of President Duterte. She's been in jail for almost six months now for mm -hmm. a pre trial period or mm -hmm. yeah what can you say about it well um, obviously I I, uh, I do not agree uh, on the grounds for which she was detained and that is why uh, last uh, week or no, this week uh, we signed uh, a resolution uh, which would in effect ask the courts to allow uh, Secretary Deliva to perform her functions as a duly elected senator. Let her case proceed. Mm -hmm. let, let the case uh, against her proceed. Uh, but since she is an elected senator, uh, there is nothing inconsistent with the court allowing her to perform her functions as a senator. And at the same time, uh, process the case against her. Pero sir, isn't that a form of special treatment as raised by some senators? Because yung tatlo daw po sila, former senators and really, well, they that, weren't granted that. Well, that's why we're addressing it to the court and let the court decide that. But you don't see it as a form of special treatment? No, you see, they're, 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 as I said, uh, the, the, we, we, we are advocates. We advocate for that. Mm -hmm. huh? And let the court uh, decide it because the court is the arbiter. Mm -hmm. There are conflicting claims in society uh, and the court system is precisely to arbitrate on these conflicting claims. Uh, the matter of Senator Delilah, we, we, have a, we, have, we, are, uh, we have a position. Uh, uh, those who are opposed to it say this is selective uh, mm -hmm. justice. Let the court decide it. Basta, as far as you're concerned, no such that thing. That is an advocacy that we have, and uh, let the court decide it. Any other thoughts you want to share, to share with us? Well, uh, your opening question was very good. How is the opposition? It's not easy these yeah. days. Pero sir, how do you see it in the next few years? Uh, Mahaba pa po ang <laughs> mga five Basta years pa. Uh, I'll leave it myself to the assessment of where we are today. Thank you very much, okay, Senate Minority you. Leader Franklin Drelon. And that was Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drelon, a member of the opposition. We talked to him about his stance on the drug-related killings as well as the future of the opposition bloc under the Duterte administration. Thank you for joining us. I'm Camille Alemia.